hello everyone in this video we are going to see the construction rules for the root locus technique so the root locus technique is the graphical approach uh, to analyze the closed loop system and to determine the stability of the system so there are certain rules to be followed uh, when we plot a curve uh, for the different location of uh, the roots of the characteristic equation located on s plane so basically uh, the complete uh, root locus is plotted on s plane so this is s plane and in s plane we are having the real axis and imaginary axis the first rule to construct a root locus root locus is nothing but the location of roots so from the transfer function given we find a number of roots and all roots are located on s plane so the location of roots will change for variation in system parameters for example if there is a open loop gain k given and uh, when the value of k is varying from uh, 0 to infinity the roots located are going to be changed so in order to construct uh, the complete locus and to find the complete root locus uh, what are the rules we have to basically follow the first rule given here is uh, the root locus is symmetrical about the real axis for example let us consider two poles are two open loop poles are located on real axis and when there is a change in system parameter so the location of these poles are going to vary so in case if uh, the location of uh, this pole is changing in this direction and this pole is also changing in this direction so both are going to meet each other so when these poles are going to meet each other there is a break away and uh, somehow if zeros are available uh, these location of uh, poles are going to the zeros position otherwise it will end to the infinity so uh, in the first rule it is said that the root locus is symmetrical about real axis so this sketch is showing uh, we are having uh, the shape of uh, the curve this way and it is symmetrical about real axis if, and if we have a uh, two poles located on real axis one pole is going in this direction and another pole location is moving in this in this direction when they are meeting each other there is a break away let's say this pole one pole is moving in the upward direction it is symmetry about real axis so the another pole will also move by the same manner so that's what said in the first rule uh, the root locus is symmetrical about the real axis and next rule is find the number of root locus branches so if we are given with the open loop transfer function for example let's say we are having the open loop transfer function that is k divided by s into s plus 2 the root locus is basically uh, started from open loop poles so here we are having uh, two poles s is equal to 0 and minus 2 even let's say in the numerator if we are having k into s plus 1 then we are having the 0 s is equal to minus 1 so total number of poles 2 and total number of zeros we are having in this transfer function is 1 so what is the maximum number either uh, poles or 0 so let's say n is number of poles and uh, m is number of zeros so here uh, so in this case n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 1 so the root locus branches is based on either the maximum number of poles or the maximum number of zeros if we are having equal number of poles and zeros we can say number of branches are the same or if number of poles are maximum than uh, number of zeros then number of root locus branch so the number of root locus branch we can say that is equal to the number of poles so the maximum number of either poles or zero will give us the count of the root locus branches and next rule given here is identify and draw the real axis root locus branches poles are generally marked as cross mark and on s plane and uh, zeros are marked as small circle on s plane 
so we already know that the location of open loop poles are going to uh, vary based on the value of k that is open loop gain k when it is varied from 0 to infinity so for the poles which are located on real axis we need to find the direction of movement the direction of variation in the location of the pole on real axis to find the locus on real axis let us take a test point and look at this side and number of poles here in this right side are odd number so it means the location of this pole is going to vary in this direction when the system parameter is getting changed and taking test point here in this side uh, in the right side of this test point we are having even number of poles then the locus of these poles are actually considered in between these two poles location and taking test point after this pole looking at right side totally we are having odd number of poles three poles odd number of poles so we now say that the location of the pole is going to vary left side up to minus infinity if zero is not available so that's what uh, the real axis segments are determined uh, based on odd number or even number of open loop poles location so find uh, the centroid and angle of asymptotes so for the system given uh, the open loop poles of the system that can be either the real value poles or the imaginary valued poles or the pole can be complex conjugate uh, from the transfer function uh, whatever the open loop poles are uh, uh, calculated uh, when k is equal to 0 they are located for example let's say we are having the real axis poles and uh, here the complex conjugate poles right and when we change the value of open loop gain k that is k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, k is equal to 3 and all and keep on varying this value up to infinity the location of all these poles are going to change so the point is uh, this pole the complex conjugate pole let's say this may move in this direction or in this direction or in this direction in any direction this pole can move when the system parameter is changed so we need to know exactly uh, on what angle of variation we are having for this complex conjugate pole or the poles on real axis anyhow when these real axis poles are going moving in this direction if they are meeting each other there may be uh, there is a breakaway and uh, they may uh, vary in a straight line as a 90 degree variation as a 90 degree variation otherwise there may be uh, the angle of variation differ as uh, 60 degree or 45 degree or any ranges so by what angle of variation uh, these location of poles are going to be so the formula to find angle of asymptote he is given here that is 180 degree into 2 q plus 1 divided by n minus m so n is the number of poles m is number of zeros and this q value so we will be finding for example uh, if we have a number of uh, poles are uh, 3 and number of uh, zeros are 1 so the q value is determined as uh, 0 1 2 up to n minus m in this case it is n minus m is so we are going to find the angle of asymptotes for q is equal to 0 and 1 and 2 so three angles we will be determining and all these angle of asymptotes are uh, taken from the centroid point then the location of poles variation in the location of poles will be shown by the angle of asymptotes and the formula to find a uh, centroid is given here it is sigma is equal to summation of uh, poles minus summation of zeros divided by uh, number of poles minus number of zeros and next rule we are having is uh, to find a breakaway and break-in points so breakaway and break-in points we need to find uh, when the poles or zeros are located on axis s plane axis
So let's say uh, we have uh, two poles and a zero located on real axis. Zero or the positive real value and two negative uh, poles, real valued poles are located on S plane. We are having even number of poles. The segment on real axis is this and this pole will move in this direction and this pole will move in this direction. When they are going to meet each other, there is a breakaway. So we need to find exactly, for example, if this pole is located at minus one, this pole is located at minus three and these two poles will meet anywhere in between minus one and minus three. So what is that point? What is that breakaway point? That is to be determined first and uh, and because the zero is existing on uh, real uh, positive real value one pole uh, will take a, a break away and across imaginary axis and uh, it will enter into the real axis uh, positive real axis and moving at one zero position and uh, we know as per the first rule uh, the curve is symmetrical about real axis so another pole will also have the same variation and uh, both are going to meet each other on real axis one pole will move and end at zero's position and another pole will move to infinity so what we want to find here what is the breakaway point for these two poles and what is the break-in point for these two poles in case if zero is existing on the axis so to find breakaway and break-in point uh, we consider uh, the characteristic equation so it was already studied that the characteristic equation of given system is 1 plus gs into hs hs is the feedback which is equal to zero say for example uh, we are having the open loop uh, transfer function k divided by s into s plus 2 and uh, unity feedback system so the value is 1 so 1 plus k divided by s into s plus 2 into 1 is equal to 0 is the characteristic equation and uh, simplifying this we will be getting the expression is s squared plus 2s plus k is equal to 0 so what is the expression for k that is actually minus of s squared plus 2s we differentiate uh, this k with respect to s and equating it to 0 and after differentiation uh, finding the roots uh, will uh, give us the value for s then again substituting this value of s to this expression if we get real and uh, positive value we can say that that there is a breakaway point so the next rule of uh, root locus is to find angle of departure and angle of arrival if we have a complex conjugate poles located on s plane or say complex conjugate uh, zeros are located on s plane that can be either in left side or right side wherever so for the variation in uh, the system parameter uh, these uh, poles will move from its initial position and ending at uh, zero's position so what is the angle of uh, uh, movement on the departure of uh, these poles that is to be determined by uh, 180 plus or minus 180 degree into 2q plus 1 plus pi and for uh, uh, zeros the poles from some the poles from somewhere uh, they located uh, they will come from their position and ending at zero's position so basically poles will come and meet uh, these zeros so for this we need to find angle of arrival So to find angle of departure and angle of arrival, we can even use this formula. It is still more clear like 180 degree minus summation of angles of vectors to the complex poles A from other poles. Let's say for example, if we are having the complex pole A located here and uh, say the another pole this to be A star. And we need to find the angle of departure for this pole 
and see uh, we have uh, another pole located on real axis here and another pole located on uh, real axis here and let's say this is zero and it is 180 degree minus summation of angles of vectors to the complex pole a so we take uh, the vectors so the angles of every pole and uh, zeros to the complex pole a so we find basically this theta 1 let's say this is uh, theta 2 and this is theta 3 and this is theta 4 so angle of departure for this pole let's say that is a is equal to 180 degree minus summation of all the angles from uh, other poles to the complex pole. that is theta 1 plus theta 3 plus theta 4 then plus summation of angles of vectors to the complex pole from zeros that is theta 2 so this is the formula we need to find so once we find the angle of departure for a then a star is calculated the angle of departure a star is calculated as minus a for angle of arrival uh, it is 180 degree minus summation of angles of vectors to the complex zero from all other zeros and summation of angles of vectors to the complex zero from all other poles so so basically what we need to find uh, the angle from all other poles located on real axis uh, to the complex conjugate pole and using this formula we can find angle of departure for uh, complex conjugate pole and angle of arrival for complex conjugate zeros and uh, the next rule is of uh, intersection points on of root locus say for example uh, we are having again the s plane uh, the complex conjugate poles are uh, located here are and these are going to have the variation in the location in this direction in this direction and moving to infinity and this will also having this direction this direction so it moves uh, in this direction means it will definitely intersect the imaginary axis for uh, some ranges of uh, k and uh, it will in after intersecting it will move to infinity otherwise if uh, zeros are available it will end to zeros position even if we have uh, uh, the pole located on real axis and these are going to have variation by this way and this is also going to have variation in this way and there is a intersection point on uh, imaginary axis and uh, it moves to zeros or infinity so what is this intersection point and how do we find it and for what value of uh, open loop gain k the pole is intersecting imaginary axis so basically this intersection point is calculated by using uh, routh harwich stability criterion otherwise uh, trial and uh, error method or uh, if we have the characteristic equation and in that characteristic equation substituting s is equal to j omega and uh, equating real and uh, imaginary values we will get to know uh, the omega value and the open loop gain k value so this omega is the intersection point so we can use any methodology to find this intersection point and the value of open loop gain k at uh, any point on the root locus that is s is equal to s a uh, is given by the product of length of vectors from poles to the point uh, s a divided by the product of length of vectors from finite uh, zeros to the point s is equal to s a so we take this point so to the point uh, where we need to find the value of gain k we are finding the length of vectors from uh, all uh, poles and zeros and using the formula we can exactly point out what is the value of k so these are the standard rules which have been already defined and uh, using all these rules we can construct uh, the complete root locus of a uh, given transfer function and uh, given system then we can comment on uh, the stability of the system and limited value for which value of k the system becoming unstable if the location of roots are moving from left side to right side of s plane so in upcoming videos we will be having uh, numerical problems so keep watching and stay tuned thank you